Gaming can be an expensive hobby, and that's never been more true these days. I think it's too... much. Where once £40 could get you a Sonic game, £40 will now get you... um, four Sonic games. Maybe. It depends on if I've read this pre-order listing correctly. However, what if I was to tell you though, that games could make you rich? And you wouldn't have to spend 70 hours a week playing Fortnite in order to do it. Well, back in the 1980s, you didn't even have to be good at a game to get hold of a big wad of cash. All you needed to do is pay the entrance fee, twice, and then solve the mystery of Hair Razor. What? Yeah. It's just a shame the game could barely be even been called a game at all. What you see is what you get here. And what you get is a steaming pile of rabbit's bumhole. So, how did this happen? How could a game with a £30,000 prize at its core be so, well, awful? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. And it all begins with an artist. A man called Kit Williams. Coffins, wood shavings, and naked ladies. In his own words, those three things were the catalyst for Kit Williams to begin his journey into the art world. Although not without a struggle. Kit grew up in a highly religious household, and his Irish Catholic mother went her entire life denying the fact her son had anything to do with artwork at all. It was probably the naked ladies part that did that, let's be honest here. There was a moral pressure, I think, and I didn't believe in it. To escape the pressure of home life, Kit ran off to the Navy for four years before eventually taking full shore leave and committing himself to a life of wonderful, bizarre, naturistic, and, um, nude artworks. His work caught the eye of a publicist who approached Williams to ask him if he'd like to produce a children's book. His initial response was a straightforward no on the basis that he couldn't bear the thought of having to redraw the same characters over and over again. He was a man who drew things from his own inspiration, and the idea of having to draw sequential artwork was his idea of hell. In the coming days, however, he softened to the idea when he came up with his own angle, a puzzle book. He told his publicist what he wanted to do and got the green light for the project. It took him over three years to put the artwork together, so long, in fact, his publicist had no idea what he was talking about when he rang him up to tell him the work was complete. I said, you know, that one that you said, uh, go and do it, that one with the puzzle in it and all the pictures and everything. Oh, did I? Williams had been working on something special. He had produced a plethora of stunning artwork housed within a puzzle book. A puzzle book that would lead to a prize that Kit Williams himself had handcrafted. A golden hair set with gems was hidden somewhere in England. The only people who knew that location were Williams himself and, bizarrely, Bamba Gascoigne, who just happened to be there with a film crew at the time. The solution to finding the treasure was contained within this collection of artwork. Masquerade. The book was a huge success and sparked a national treasure hunt. Released in 1979, it took three years before the riddle was solved, However, the prize was not claimed by those clever enough to work things out. Mike Barker and John Russo were two geniuses who managed to solve the book, leading them to the sentence, Catherine's long finger overshadows earth buried yellow amulet. Midday points the hour in light of equinox. Look you. Taking the first letter from each of these words spells out a second clue. Close by Ampt Hill. The problem was, they had the rough location, but they didn't realise that others were at work. A man named Doug Thompson, under the alias of Ken Thomas, got his hands on the treasure. This was someone who had no idea what the solution to the puzzle was at all. Williams had accidentally given an old girlfriend a clue to where the golden hair was located. She shared that information with a friend, who then passed that information along to, you guessed it, Doug Thompson. The prize, in the end, didn't go to those who deserved it, but those with ears close to the ground. A national scandal infused, 
and Williams went into hiding for the next 30 years. But out of this strange tale forms another, Hairsoft. Using the ill-gotten winnings, Thompson set up Hairsoft during the micro-boom of the early 80s, with plans to produce two video games that would do much the same thing that Masquerade did in the decade prior. These games, Hairraiser Prelude and Hairraiser Finale, would provide the player with clues as to the location of the golden hair that Thompson had so rudely ripped out of the hands of those who played the original game fairly. It was, essentially, a way to try and rake in more cash than the golden hair was worth. The winner would be able to either keep the hair or could choose to take the cash equivalent, an estimated value of £30,000. The question is though, how do you make enough money to support the whole thing? Well, unfortunately for Hairsoft, they didn't. And they went into liquidation less than a year after they formed. And really, it's no surprise when you consider what Hairsoft were offering. Each of the two games cost £8.95, a premium price back when you could pick up an actual micro game for less than half that price. Couple that with the games themselves being, well, something you couldn't really even call a game. Half of the clues this so-called puzzle game spits out at you are something a child could have thrown together. The program basically involves moving around some screens, seeing a rabbit every now and then, and that's it. The reviews were awful, the connection to Doug Thompson certainly wasn't appealing to anyone, and well, karma just struck at the right time it would seem. With the money making idea, and the company falling flat on their asses, the golden hair went up for auction, at which point Williams himself tried to buy it back, but could only stump up £6,000. The hair eventually sold for £31,900 to an unknown overseas party. Williams would continue to work on his art in isolation, shunning anyone who came to him with offers of putting on another treasure hunt event, with a bitter taste left in his mouth ever since, no doubt. It wouldn't be until 2009 that he finally came out of hiding for a BBC4 documentary entitled The Man Behind Masquerade, where, thanks to good fortune and timing, they were able to reunite Kit with a golden hair once more at an art gallery which showed off all the work he put together over his period of hiding. Kit Williams, now in his 70s, continues his work in the Gloucestershire countryside to this day. And while Masquerade didn't get the happy ending it deserved, it certainly had a happier ending than Hairsoft did. Hello you! Thanks ever so much for watching! Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified, and be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon! But thanks again for watching, and until next time friends, I'm missing you already.